Okay. Now, I will be honest with you. The reason I kept you in suspense was because Grandma had a senior moment, and I forgot what the third one was. But anyway, <laughs> I think you can forgive me for that. <clears throat> I am 61, you know. Anyway, here we go. Here, here it is. I, okay, let's not have another senior moment. I'm trying to gather my thought because this was a funny one. Here it is. Okay, it's back. Thank you, Lord. Okay, here I was at church. Now, the reason I'm saying these, we have to laugh at ourselves and, at our, and we have to laugh at our human imperfections because we are all an unclean thing. We, are all, we all fall short of the glory of God. I mean, we fall short in some of the most humorous ways. But we have to learn to look over it, laugh at it, not take it so seriously, and understand there is still much need for healing in the body of Christ and mutual understanding and acceptance. And above all, love, agape love, unconditional love. Hello, that's God's way, not ours. Here we go. Now, I'm at a particular church in Pasadena <clears throat> and uh, we had a thing called racial reconciliation night so we had each nationality and each race have one representative come up and say whatever they could say to help the healing within the body of Christ, help alleviate some of the misunderstandings, some of the misnomers, some of, you know, all of that. Uh, and what we ended up doing was each one just took their time coming up, saying what they needed to say, either an apology, explanation, opening understanding, whatever, but it was all reconciliatory. So when we got through, uh, some people were still going up, and nature called, so I had to make a quick run to pay my water bill, if you get my drip. Now, when I came back from the ladies' room, I'm walking down the pathway so I can get all the way up the, um, to where my seat is, the gigantic auditorium, held about 6,000 people. And... As I'm walking, a lady's walking towards me with some of her friends. And they're talking and, you know, just mealing about heading where I came from. And she, uh, she stopped me. And she said, uh, now here, I'm going to imitate, okay. Oh, excuse me. Hi, aren't you the lady who was up on stage talking about your people and the racial reconciliation talk? And I said, yes, I was. And she said, you are so articulate. And I said, thank you. Anyway, in my mind, I'm saying, anyway. Now, question. Had I been another white lady, like her, would she have commented at all? Think about that. Think about it. Would she have commented at all? Would it have even occurred to her to be surprised? Why was she surprised? Question, are you surprised? Any of you who are not of the black persuasion or of the Mexican persuasion or whatever that you deem may be less intelligent, are you surprised? when someone that you least expect opens their mouth and communicates the way people communicate. Are you surprised? And I ask you this, why? If you, are, if you find yourself being surprised by things that come up because you have preconceived notions or because you have misnomers about uh, what to expect, or you don't you you've never been really exposed to that particular group or nationality 
then do yourself a favor. Number one, ask God to help you. This is to blacks and to whites. I'm talking to everybody now because we're all guilty of it. Ask God to help you. Love number one. Number two, help you be bold enough to cross your own boundaries and get to know people of other persuasions, Asian, Mexican, black, white, whatever. Get to know them. Find out who they are as individual people and draw your conclusion on a person, not a group. Because in every group, you're going to find beautiful people, and in every group, you're going to find raunchy, low-life, tacky-poo people. No matter what race it is, trust me, may be hard for you to believe, but it's true anyhow. So listen. Make an effort. If you always on Sunday hang with your friends and your group and your color, start breaking that mold and start inviting people from other persuasions in your little pack. Stop being so cliquish and exclusive and aloof and avoiding. Stop being so avoid. If you're afraid, if you're a little nervous because you've never been exposed to them. Ask God to help you open that door. You don't have to remain locked away. You don't have to remain on racial lockdown. Come on up out of that. That doesn't come from God. That comes from fear. Fear is not of God. God is love and perfect love casts out all fear. And if you have resentment because somebody from elementary or junior high school mistreated you from another persuasion, don't blame the persuasion, baby. Number one, ask God to help you forgive that child who's probably, who is an adult like you now, even if you never see him again in life. And then ask God to open you up. Open you up and remove your little protective mechanisms. It's a new world when you're an adult. Reach out. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Try it. You might like it. God bless you. And if you can't do it on your own and you don't have the nerve, please ask God because God wants unity not division, especially in the body.